Ah, the distinctive sound of the 70s string machine. A collection of instruments that acted somewhat as a stopgap in the development of synthesizers, but that have since become famous in their own right. Today we're going to look at one such keyboard, the Krumar Multiman S, also known as the Orchestrator, produced in Italy in 1977. The reason I refer to these kind of instruments as a stopgap is because they were a compromise, a temporary solution to a problem whilst the technology for a better solution was being developed. And that problem was polyphony. By the early 70s, monophonic synths were well established and people naturally wanted polyphonic synthesizers. But there was a hurdle. The then standard analog keyboards were essentially voltage dividers that made a contact at a single point, and whilst there was a duophonic trick to get a high and low voltage and therefore two notes from such a keyboard, that was the limit. In order to designate multiple notes played simultaneously on a keyboard to discrete oscillators, filters, amps and envelopes, you needed digital scanning so that the synth knew what your phalanges were up to. And whilst this was invented at least twice in the early 70s, it was expensive to produce an instrument with this setup. And without any form of global control or memory, changing sounds one voice at a time was laborious. So there was a gap in the market for something affordable and practical, and for a few years in the mid-70s, it was filled by the string synthesizer. The way these instruments got around the polyphony conundrum was by using divided down master oscillators, like the electronic organs of the same era. In the case of this Krumar, we have a top octave MK50240IC that is divided down so that every note on the keyboard can be played at once without the need for digital scanning. As the origin of each individual sound, strings, brass, piano, etc., is identical for each key you're pressing, you can switch between them with the click of a button, making the string synth incredibly practical. However, as mentioned, there was a compromise. These instruments were paraphonic. It means that each note shares a single filter and amp. The outcome is that string synths work well for homogeneous playing, but have some slightly awkward behaviour when you try to play contrapuntally. To demonstrate what I mean, let's play a single note repeatedly, and we'll hear that the paraphonic multiman behaves just like normal. The envelopes are triggered and the filter and amp are contoured, giving us an articulated note each time. However, just hold a second note in the left hand, and now that's all ruined. The right note has to now inherit its filter and amp behaviour from the left hand note that went before it, and it doesn't sound properly. When compared to a Juno 6, which is not paraphonic, you can hear the difference. And this is one of the main reasons string synths petered out when polysynths with full articulation of each note, global parameter control and patch memory became possible in the late 70s and then affordable to everyday users into the 80s. But back to the string synth heyday, let's have a closer look at this Krumar. It's divided into left and right hands, as was the norm with string synthesizers, and the sounds are based on synthesized versions of acoustic instruments, something that was common in the early days of synthesis. They, of course, sound very little like the real instruments they're supposed to emulate, and that's the charm. The strings run through a TCA350 Bucket Brigade Delay IC internally for an ensemble effect, 
but there's no front panel settings to switch that on or off or change its speed or depth. But it creates a really distinctive sound, particularly in the lower register, and this is what string synths are famous for. Now the classic thing to do with strings is add some phaser, so I'm going to use my Highlight Phaser Mark II for that. Questi archi col phaser vengono direttamente dal paradiso. Next we have brass, which is also affected by the vibrato and sustain, but that has its own voltage control filter with the two-stage envelope emphasis, which is resonance, and contour, which is envelope amount. There was originally a foot pedal to control emphasis, but this multi-man came without it, so we'll have to make do. Next we have a very limited piano that sounds not much like a piano, but that at least has some character. There's an additional sustain control for it via the foot switch. We also have a pluckier clavichord sound. And finally we have one more bonus sound. Bass. This is only available for the left hand and just has a volume control, although it's also affected by the sustain pedal and LFO. There was also a set of organ style bass pedals that you could get for the Multiman that I sadly don't have. Not that my two left feet could play them if I did. So there's the individual sounds, but we can now combine them to become the orchestrator or the Multiman. Even better, there's individual outs so that we can process and mix sounds separately. Here's strings left, brass right, and bass center with piano and clav joining halfway through. Make sure you're listening in stereo. So to play us out, I'm going to make a 70s style track using some other gear from the era and employ the Krumar in a contextual setting. Grazie per la visione. Thank you.
sexy music.